Hello everyone, my name is Amit Singh and welcome again to the Cisco collaboration group on uh, Facebook as we as I already promised to you guys. Uh, I am discussing again today the collaboration term of the week. And the collaboration term of the week for today is SIP Digest Authentication. Uh, I hope uh, most of you guys know about this. What is this SIP Digest Authentication? Uh, no, maybe. Okay, so let's see what it is. Maybe you have seen these messages um, a lot of time, um, you know, in your uh, SIP messages if you are working on the SIP to SIP uh, calls or wipe calls. How about this one? 401 unauthorized and here you go you say okay there is a 401 message or an unauthorized message there is something wrong with our configuration we have done something wrong with the configuration but this is not the case you know it, it's a real uh, uh, good response from a server because it's a security mechanism or it's an authentication mechanism which is being used you know to 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 authenticate a particular sip call so digest authentication basically is nothing but a authentication mechanism uh, implemented using the rfc 3261 and using this mechanism you can authenticate a call so this is one of the mechanisms uh, through which you can um secure a particular sip call so this is you cannot be guaranteed that you know the uh, sip call is uh, authenticated because uh, there are some other authentications as well for example to authentic uh, to secure um, an rtp stream into this sip call you might have to use tls authentication you know wherein your um the rtp stream into the SIP call uh, would be secure. So, you know, it's only, it's not only that you have to authenticate the signaling, but you also have to authenticate the media. So there are two types of uh, uh, packets. So one is a signaling packet and the second is the media packet or the RTP packet inside a voice call. So you need to secure both in order to secure a call. So today we are only going to discuss one of the mechanism or that's called as the digest authentication. So let's see a scenario wherein, um, let's say if there is a phone and then this phone is uh, communicating with a uh, uh, service provider or let's say is instead of a phone I just took a screenshot from one of these Cisco's documents so instead of a phone you can assume that uh, you know this is um, uh, a cube you know a router where it sends uh, first invite so as I discussed with you guys uh, for any call to initiate there will be a user agent client and user agent server because SIP protocol uses the client server mechanism to establish a session because it's a session based call you know so uh, basically the first in the first thing that would happen is the phone will be acting as a client because it is requesting uh, to call someone you know so it sends a request that's why it sent client and then the service provider it becomes a server to which the invite is being sent and then the service provider says okay you have sent me an invite but i don't know who you are you know so there is in the invite there is no username or there is no way that a service provider could authenticate this call so this is why service provider says okay i will send you a 401 unauthorized message and then please acknowledge me and send me an invite again with a username and password and some more details so that i could authenticate you 
and then I could process your call, you know. So in this way, there, if you see there is a second invite from the phone and then the phone says, okay, in the second invite, I have a username and password. Please authenticate me and please authenticate this call. I am the correct caller or calling party, you know, and then the user agent server says, okay, I will send you a 180 ringing and this is how the call goes through. Okay, so let's have a look at how uh, a 401 challenge uh, from the provider looks like or, you know, uh, there, one of the headers that is important when a 401 challenge is or a 401 unauthorized message is received from the provider is the www-authenticate header inside this 401 uh, challenge you know so basically in a uh, user agent server or a provider in this in our case it uses the 401 response to challenge the identify uh, identity sorry of a user agent client so in our case it could be a phone or it could be a, a cube uh, or an SBC you know so basically it consists of a realm so I just took this uh, screenshot from the IETF 3261 protocol website and then you see there is a realm called as um, biloxi.com so you know uh, basically this realm is containing either a host name or a domain name you know and then uh, for digest authentication each such protection domain you know has its own set of usernames and, and, and passwords so this is how the www-authenticate header inside a 401 uh, uh, message looks like you know it has other it has other uh, uh, parameters as well so basically it has something called as nonce so it's nothing but a server specified data string so it is uniquely generated for um, each 401 uh, response you know it's from the server side and in, in addition to this the header field may contain something some uh, additional arguments um, like opaque so it's nothing but a, it's also a string of data that is also coming from the server and it should be returned by the client so whenever you know uh, um, a phone sends a response or another invite again it should contain the exact same value of the opaque to 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 uh, make sure that it's the same call you know it could also contain uh, if i remember it right it's also containing something called as a value as stale uh, s-t-a-l-e you know so it's just one of the flags to say that you know last time um, the usc was rejected or the call was rejected because uh, the the nonce value so the nonce that we discussed previously it, it was stale you know and then it could also specify what kind of algorithm needs to be used most of the times it's uh, uh, md5 algorithm so it's it's a string you know it's indicating a pair of algorithms that could be used to produce the uh, um, digest value and a checksum to to authenticate a call and then it could also contains as you see here a qop options so it's a quality of protection so it's a it's nothing but a string uh, of some tokens uh, that would indicate the quality of pro uh, protection values that is being supported by the server so it could so in this case you see that qop is auth or auth minus int so these are the um, token values that are being supported by uh, a zip server you know so let's uh, see uh, let's see how a 401 challenge uh, from the provider looks like so this is uh, a screenshot also that i took from cisco's document so you see that um, there is a 401 unauthorized message and then there is something called as uh, um, ww minus authenticate that i was talking about you know and then it says the realm is example.com and the QOP that I'm using is auth and the nonce that I'm using is this value, 
you know and then there is an opaque value i think this is uh, cut while i was copying uh, uh, taking a screenshot but there will be an opaque value that a provider sends uh, or it's empty i think it's empty it's not uh, uh, specified so this is how a 401 unauthorized message would look like you know and then let's take a look at now um, something called as uh, an authorization header in the second invite to the response to the 401 challenge you know so this is an authorization header in the invite to the 401 response and then here you will see the digest username and then it has a realm and then nonce so this value will be same as uh, the value the nonce value will be the same as the value um, that is being sent by the provider and the most important thing uh, is it's not most important usually but it says uh, this reinvite should also have a request URI same as uh, the one that is being sent in the invite you know so the request URI in the SIP should match the URI that is specified in the, inside this authorization header and then it says um, the QOP mechanism uh, that I am using the quality of protection is auth and then there are some more uh, important thing but then there is a password as well you know and uh, the username is already here so using this username and the response that's the password that's the md5 hash value the server would be able to um, you know uh, to to respond or if he if he supports this user or if he could authenticate this user from his database or or not so what happens next is uh, let me show you uh, how would a next invite uh, to the 401 response look like so this is the just the authorization header inside the zip second zip invite that that is being sent with a username and password but just have let's have a look at um, the second um, invite exactly how it looks like when it's being sent by the client in our case a cube router or a phone to the server so basically this is how um, the UAC or user agent client response uh, looks like so the UAC will reoriginate the request again with the proper credential in the authorization header so in this case uh, the authorization header field uh, value will consist of the authentication information and the uh, and the arguments needed argument arguments sorry so basically it will consist of a username it will consist of uh, so this is the authorization header which is inside your UAC response or user agent client response so it consists of a username so this is the same user that was inside a first invite that is that was being sent you know so it's the same uh, thing which you say, see inside a request uri you see so 36601 uh, oh sorry uh, I, I meant uh, from uh, 36602 the, the value that you'd see here in the from header it's inside the um, inverted commas double inverted commas 36602 this is the user so this user um, is the same that you see here so it's it could be a different user as well it doesn't have to be a same user from the from header so i was just giving you an example you know so uh, the username uh, is in is in a specified realm so it has to be in a specified realm of course and then this value is taken from the uh, configuration either at the dial pair level or at the global level okay and then it also consists of something called as uri so this uri usually as per the uh, provider that this has to match uh, the same the request uri should be the same as um, the uri inside the authorization header but this might not be the case every time in case you have a, a SIP proxy in between, you know. So instead of 401, in that case, you will 
proxy a 407 proxy authentication required message you know so that's that's the other thing and then uh, you will see there is a response so there is a password and there is this is nonce it should be the same that is being sent by the provider so nonce and then here you will see a realm which is example.com so it is the same realm that is being sent by the provider in the 401 response so provider says okay i know this realm i know this user i know this password and i can authenticate you you know so once the call is authenticated the call will go through and the call would be connected into the uh, PSTN world so let's see how you could just um, configure this authentication um, on Cisco cube so it's just a small configuration you just have to go to sip minus UA and then inside that you just have to type the command authentication username and then there will be a username sorry provided by your service provider and then there would be a password that will be provided by your service provider and then the type of encryption that you would like usually it's either zero or seven uh, algorithm that you use uh, to hash the, the passwords and the realm so the realm that we already talked about it will be either a domain or the host name so using this you could then um, you know create an authentication uh, so when the user sends a reinvite it will then send a username and uh, password so this is how your calls uh, can be authenticated all right then i thank you guys for uh, your patience and watching this video uh, i hope you would like this video if there is any uh, improvement that you would like me to make just let me know uh, maybe i would uh, you know um, improve my descriptions or i could go a little bit more slow or or whatever you know uh, maybe i'm not much clear to you guys or, or anything that you would think it's good for the complete group would be a better thing to do you know so keep sharing this with your with your colleagues in the office maybe they need some clarity on this small small things uh, during troubleshooting or implementing uh, or whatever you know so let's make a good uh, community out here for cisco collaboration and let's uh, uh, give our best to 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 do to ease everyone each and everyone's life all right then i wish you all a nice weekend and uh, i will talk to you guys again in my next collaboration term of the week video thank you